shorebirds, waders, whatever you want to call them. These birds can be pretty hard to identify for a lot of people. So in this video, I'm going to give you five tips that will hopefully help you identify these birds coming up right after this. Now, if you're one of those people who has gotten into birding and you're going wild about how many types of birds there are, all their cool colors and everything, but you've just kind of neglected the shorebirds because they just kind of all look the same to you. They're kind of drab, not quite as beautiful as other birds. I definitely understand that because that was me for a long time. And it really wasn't until I actually gave shorebirds the time of day that I really started to appreciate them and learn a lot more about them. Shorebirds are truly amazing birds because they migrate such long distances and they eat such a massive amount of food in such a short period of time. If you haven't given shorebirds a shot, you definitely should force yourself to go observe them and do your best to identify them. Now, I have a whole playlist with different videos that will hopefully help you while birding. For example, I have a video on best birding apps. I have another video on best bird guides. And I have another video on just some general birding tips for beginners. I would definitely go check out that video specifically. But in this video, I'm going to tell you some specific things about shorebirds that'll a lot of people don't think of that hopefully will help you identify shorebirds. So my number one tip is to get a scope. Scopes are really essential for spotting shorebirds and other water birds because often they are really far away. They will stand relatively still compared to other kinds of birds so you can actually get the scope on them. I do understand that there's a lot of people who just simply can't afford such an expensive piece of, of equipment. Some scopes are cheaper than others. At some point I will make a video on what types of scopes I recommend based on your budget. But if you just cannot afford any scope, what I highly suggest is making friends with someone who does have a scope and use their scope. How can you make friends with people who have a birding scope? Well, you got to get to know other birders. So you go to things like an Audubon club, Audubon meetings, you know, local community club, bird walks, stuff like that. And I guarantee you someone will have a scope. My second tip when identifying shorebirds is to try to forget about color and try to pay a lot more attention to its shape, especially the shape of the bill. Many shorebirds, depending on when you see them during the year, will actually be out of plumage and they will be even drabber than usual. But even when they are in plumage, they still aren't the most colorful birds. So by just looking at the bill, you should be able to narrow it down to just a few choices. Now that is not to say that color is completely irrelevant. As you get more advanced, color can absolutely be useful to identify shorebirds. But when I identify shorebirds, the number one thing I always look at is the bill shape the size of the bill relative to the head, and then the shape of the body. The third tip I have to identify shorebirds is definitely pay attention to the size, but only pay attention to the relative size. When you spot a shorebird, you'll see them from all different distances. They might be 20 yards away, they might be 100 yards away. It's always gonna be hard to tell its exact size just by looking at it on its own. If you're able to judge the size of a bird relative to the bird right next to it, that's gonna be your takeaway. One good example of this is it's pretty hard to distinguish between pectoral sandpipers, western sandpipers, semi-palmated sandpipers, and least sandpipers. Those four species that I just named are really not that much different in size from each other. If they were just standing on their own, they would be way harder to identify than if they were standing next to each other. A yellow legs, if it's far away, it'll look small, but it's not gonna look that small if it's standing next to a small peep sandpiper. So, so my fourth tip is to just know that shorebirds migration are a bit more variable than other species in their geography. So what I'm trying to get at is when you're identifying shorebirds, have an open mind for, you know, species that might be considered rare or unusual. You should have a more open mind for that with shorebirds compared to other species of birds. Now my fifth tip might be obvious for a lot of advanced birders, but if you're a beginning birder, it's very easy to forget this, is you gotta pay attention to the tides. Shorebirds can be found on the edges of freshwater bodies, but of course they are found on the edges of saltwater bodies as well where tides are relevant 
And in a lot of places, you are more likely to find shorebirds at low tide because that's when more of their habitat is exposed. That is when there is a larger area of mud flats that are more accessible to shorebirds. That is when a larger portion of the beach is more accessible. Shorebirds feed on macroinvertebrates living in the sediment, whether it's sand or mud or whatever. But you're probably most likely to find the highest number of shorebirds when the tide is going out. Not even at the lowest point, but when it's going out. Because if you think about it, the birds are probably waiting around for the tide to go out. And then once the tide starts going out, that's right when they flock to the sediment to feed. So get to the shore right as the tide is going out to optimize your chances of seeing shore birds. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any more questions, please post in the comments below. Good luck identifying your shore birds and also good luck on being a super huge nerd.